Okay, for this week's YouTube chat, I'd like to take an overall look at the United Rugby Championship as a competition. It has just kicked off its fourth season, and on social media, I've been among a sizable group of fans to share this catchphrase, URC is the best league. Since we started saying that before a ball was even kicked, and given there are also some fans, especially from one of the five nations in particular, who were saying the exact opposite before a ball was even kicked, what can we actually say about it based on the evidence of the past three seasons? Starting with yourself, Tom. Um, I suppose the URC best league moniker probably <laughs> looking at the genesis of it, it probably came out of of a, as a sort of a an anti uh, you know came out of it was born out of reacting to the criticism of the league uh, when it started off. Yeah, it was tongue in cheek, but still, it was it, it kind of evolved. It has it has evolved, yeah. But I I think the genesis of it was more the the, the how the, how the league was poor, the league was poor and the setup was poor and travel and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. From our friend friends in Wales, <laughs> we might as well name them. <laughs> but uh, and, and it sort of it sort of grew tongue and t- uh, sort of as you say tongue in cheek from there, and it sort of carried its own legs. That it sort of become a bit of a an, an in joke, and a, it it might become mainstream eventually. Look, I, I I how the league is going after three years. I think look, I think the like all marriages are imperfect. Um, except my except Irish Sinead, in case you're listening. But, <laughs> Uh, I think, look, if you look at the, you know, we're not France, we're not a population of 60 million where you're going to have top 14 clubs and a, and a solid pro pro adult league sort of feeding into that. Uh, and we're not at 60 million or whatever it is across in, in England. And uh, so it is a marriage of convenience. And when, when, you, when you have a marriage of convenience, you know, especially Scotland, Wales and, and Ireland initially, I think, you know, it's going to be imperfect, but you have to either you're either going to give out about the imper- uh, imperfections of it, um, or go with it, and that doesn't mean you ignore change that should happen, um, and I I, I do think that Scotland, I'm generalising here, of course, um, because there's a lot of Welsh supporters do enjoy going to their games and see a good crowd at the Dragons the weekend, getting a good win against the Ospreys and 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 Cardiff getting off to a win. And 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 Scarlett seemed to be bouncing back, you know, with it, with against a, a, a Treviso team or Benetton team that, that was was good last year, and and they do embrace it. Um, but overall, there's there's more negativity coming out of Wales in the league. Um, but as I said, if it's a marriage of, of convenience, you just got to really get on with it. And I think Italy have done the same, and South Africa have realised they've added a new dimension to it. South Africa realised as well, you know, it it, it is the imp- imperfect ingredients. But you've just got to get on with it and make it work. Um, because we are, especially the Celtic nations in Italy, we are smaller unions um of what we can provide on the you know by ourselves. And we do need we all need each other. Um, you know, it's the four legs in the stool. You start taking away legs in the stool, eventually it'll fall over. So I think there's an acceptance there from from this side of the the Irish Sea that that's you know, we, we do try and make the best of it. Um and that doesn't matter if, if your team is successful, like Leinster winning eight leagues or, or Connacht who've won one or Ulster who haven't won one in a while. I think generally there's positivity towards the league. I think on the league itself, um, yeah, I think I think you'd give it definitely a sort of a, a B mark, I think, after three years. I think there's some positivity there. Uh, looking at the, you know, we've beat the BKT, big sponsor now. Uh, I think Vodacom are sponsored down in South Africa. Um, you know, TV viewership was up fifty percent, I think, last year. Um, up to about forty eight, fifty million, uh, which is huge growth. And you know, people might say, sure, that's 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 South Africa. They're looking at that." But England, England, sorry, Britain and Ireland, it was up twenty five percent year on year. So there is more engagement, and they're good signs that will help sponsors. You know, because there's more eyeballs on the league. Um, I I think generally the. The, the social media around the league has been pretty pretty good as well, pretty positive, trying to push a positive message. Uh, they don't get it right all of the time, but like, who does? You know what I mean. So you know, I think I think the messaging has been quite good. Um, and you know, the other side of it as well is you know, since the foundation of the Celtic League, plenty of teams have 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 gone out of business, and you know we're, you know, where do we you know look other look look elsewhere? We talk of going to the Premiership. Uh, or the Premiership, at least now looking at at, at the, the URC, 
and both parties probably denying it. But like over the years, Border Border Reavers went bust. Their only went bust. The Celtic Warriors, I think, Southern Kings, obviously, when they were there, went into administration. So like rugby, like all sports, and and we you know there is change and there is turnover, but that doesn't mean over the overall product is negative either. Do you know what I mean? I, I think I wouldn't choose throw so many stones about the, the English teams. You know, letting two or three teams go, you know, go to the wall as well. It's it, it, they're in a different as a big a big league with a big population. They are having their own difficulties, so they they have a different different issues. But I I think overall, you know, the last three years it's been good. Um, as I said, I give the score a B plus. I think last year was a positive. I think the in the quarterfinals, every nation was represented after the Ospreys pipped the Lions to get into the last eight. Um, every 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 all 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 five um teams in the league had somebody in the qualifiers of the league, which is good for the league. Um, I think we haven't won it yet in three years. We haven't even got to a final. So <clears throat> URC best league, maybe maybe it's the personal thing as well. It's not quite the best league for us yet, but I can cast that aside and go, yeah, it's 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 been good overall, and I think the the inclusion of the South Africans. Um, see the bigger crowds starting to come back now post COVID, and um, they're starting to buy into the league, and they're it, it's starting to matter. You could see how much the Bulls enjoyed beating Leinster, um, in that semi final. The apps, you know, the fans and the and the team went 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 nuts. Probably too much because they had no energy the following week against Glasgow. <clears throat> but that's for another day. Um, but look, it's good. It's good if the, you know if, if the South Africans are buying it in on on filling up, starting to fill up their stadiums and. And and there those crowds coming back and, and getting eyeballs on the TV. I think that's only good for for uh for for us. Look, rugby is in it, apart from if France, to be honest with you, is the exception. Just finishing off the top fourteen is is probably the best league the way it's but it's it, it's un it's impossible to replicate. Uh you see super rugby's in in in, in a bit of dire straits with Australia. And New Zealand complaining about that. Uh, we've already mentioned the English Premiership with three teams going and maybe more. You know, the likes of Newcastle are in sort of financial difficulty. So it's not a perfect marriage that we have. It is a marriage of convenience. And 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 you either, you know, get on with it or complain about it. And uh, I think in the whole, Irish supporters have decided to get on with it. And and um, because they know... You know, the, the especially the Celtic nations. Once, once we're together on it, um, you know, we're able to support each other. And if, if we start peeling that away, um, I think that just weakens weakens the league overall, um, because it's uh, it's it, it is a marriage of convenience, and we do need we do need to stick together and 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 improve it, obviously, and improve it and get more buy in, you know. But I, I think it's on an upward tra- trajectory, and uh, yeah, it's been a good good three years so far. Yeah, I agree. I think B is a is a is a decent and uh, and uh, accurate uh, kind of mark for it. I mean, I mean, like you say, you take five very different rugby nations, where with different player um, po- player populations, different even standing of the game of rugby within that country that differs across the five nations. Like pretty much everything. Everything differs, and you try to bring them together for one competition, um, you know, and then they put the branding on it, United Rugby Championship. It's like it's it, it's it's a challenge to say the least. Um, and uh, you're you're bringing the South African teams into the fold as well, who literally have to change their calendar, basically how what they the way they're used to playing the season that uh, where they have their preseason and when they're getting into their business end. It's it, it it's a really it was and you know three years ago we really didn't know what to expect um going into it. But you know, three years in, obviously the, the one thing you can talk about branding, you can talk about logos, you can talk about teams here, there, and the other. At the end of the day, the product is on the pitch. And you cannot argue with the um, the level of competitiveness the league has had, both in the regular season where we've had great battles for those eight uh, playoff spots uh, over the final weeks, but also in the playoffs themselves. You've had three. You say Ireland hasn't won it, but we've topped the league three times. The yeah. the 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 top team hasn't won it yet, um, which which just shows how competitive these you know whether it's home advantage or not shows how competitive the, um, the, the, the playoffs could be. So, and you've had, you know, winners, um, you know, th- 
three three different countries uh winning the three the three titles yeah. as well so it's 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 been it's been it's been a really good product on the pitch but of course one of the reasons I'm bringing this up for this topic is because we went through that we've gone through that whole um carousel again of uh oh the Wales online asked somebody oh um is there is there talk of an Anglo Welsh league and somebody doesn't answer so next thing there's an article oh we didn't get an answer so maybe there could be an Anglo Welsh league and then the premiership has to make a statement and then the URC makes a statement and there's articles 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 for a week and the whole conversation goes on again and then the season just kicks off anyway you know it's uh it's and and you know, and then in there as well, the stock of a British and Irish league as well, which is the next uh, level of the conversation, because, you know, I think the Premiership wanted to get in. They would rather have the Irish teams in there as well. It's a question of Wales are looking at England, England are looking over Wales and Ireland. And it's 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 all a, it's all, it's, it's all kind of a mess. But at, at the end of the day, like you say, we have to go on with what we have. And um, and it's, you know, so far. There's nothing, it hasn't been totally perfect. Like, for example, this weekend, it was supposed to be the kickoff. You'd like all the teams to be kicking off this weekend, but they had, but sure, the Curry Cup final is the same weekend. How, and they actually had the South African team scheduled. They only announced that they were going to postpone those games a couple of weeks ago. That could have been sorted out a long time before, I thought. But they're just small little finicky points. I think overall, there's a, there's, you know, apart from some, some elements in the Welsh fan base as, as we say um it's it's been a, it's been a good you know good take up of the league after three seasons now what do you think Aaron? yeah listen we have a competitive league that's well marketed and allows all the teams to uh, allows the five nations the five unions involved to compete so i think that's crucial i mean rugby is an inherently imperfect sport you know the old joke from people who don't like rugby is that only 10 teams play it and uh, that's probably a bit harsh on other teams around Europe. We still look at, we have an issue with the Six Nations. There's this whole, well, if South Africa are playing in the URC, should they be playing in the Six Nations? Obviously, you'd have to have them based in Europe if they were doing that. But there's this issue of, well, then why don't we have promotion and relegation with the Rugby Europe Championship like they have all the way down? So there's so much imperfection in rugby. I think this really is the best case scenario. And the Bears, it's been a really good league. I mean, it's been really entertaining. And it's been really competitive. It hasn't been entertaining because Leinster have been winning like there was a time there when it was the pro number to be to, to be decided uh, ahead of the season pro 12 pro 15 pro 16 pro 14 um there was a time there leinster won four in a row fairly easily i mean it was fairly easy leinster i think finished top in those four seasons but regardless i, I think there was one year we didn't actually glasgow finished top but regardless we won we won fairly easily and that was great for us. We obviously love that. Yeah, more trophies. But at the end of the day, that doesn't help us in Europe. That doesn't help Ireland, ultimately, uh, being more competitive on the international stage. And that doesn't help uh, the league in general. I mean, you could see why if the same teams win the league every year that, um, you know, maybe the Welsh, Italian, Scottish teams would be like, what's the point of us taking part in this? So, um, you know, this has been a generally competitive league. We've had three winners from three different nations. I don't think Munster fans would be happy with you, Tom, saying Ireland haven't won it yet. Uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, we've had three winners from three different unions. We've had consistently competitive games. None of the finals have been blowouts. The, the playoffs have been fairly competitive. I would make the argument that maybe, okay, if there's only 16 teams in the league, do eight teams need to qualify? That's not to say that it hasn't been entertaining, but maybe you do, like the French model, the top six, and have a second tier kind of shield competition. We love our nice second tier chats on this show. Um, but maybe maybe you do something like that. I don't think that's a massive issue, though, because ultimately the league's been very competitive. And, you know, it's been a good product to watch. On the Anglo-Irish League, on the Anglo-Welsh League, I mean, is that really helping anyone or is that just papering over? There's a lot of, I, I'm not pretty all the issues in English rugby I agree with Tom that like look at the old Celtic League had teams go out of business I mean it's it's easy to point fingers but that's that's probably something they need to organize themselves and the fairness the premiership have come out and said no actually none of this has been happening it seems uh but um there was there was this bizarre thing that like premiership open to Irish Anglo League or something it was just a it was just kind of a shot to nothing but uh, I think I think you know England and France are the only two countries in Europe who really have the pop, rugby playing population to sustain their own league we don't we have four provinces we can't have those provinces play each other every week one thing I will say is I said this before the playoff started in um in uh, at the end of la at the end of the last season uh, you could argue that for both 
travel concerns and environmental concerns, maybe the playoffs should be based either in Europe or South Africa. Um, because it's a lot to expect a team, you know, to play a game in Europe or play a game in South Africa, have to travel to the other continent, the other side of the world, because it is quite a long way, Europe and South Africa, um, and then suddenly have to travel back again for the final. So you can make the argument that that's something that needs to be looked at, I think. But um, I think this league is the best case for the five unions involved. You can make the argument that maybe... You try to get the Georgians included. You try maybe like Zebra, there was talks about their financial problems. Do you include another Italian team or do you include a Cheetahs from South Africa? That's probably a conversation, a conversation for another day. But, um, you know, I, I think it's financially viable, which is crucial. It's competitive and it's entertaining. So, like, I have no problem with the URC. I, 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 I'm all for URC best league. And it's really, from a selfish point of view, from Ireland, it's really helped us grow as a nation because our provinces have had consistently more competitive games. Um, and, you know, there's always complaints in Ireland how there's too many Leinster players in the squad. Well, this will actually help that. This will actually help that because Munster, Connacht and Ulster can have more competitive games now. So, um, yeah, look, I think it's the best It's the best case scenario for the uh, five unions involved. It's an entertaining, marketable and competitive product. So yeah, I've no problem with the URC and I hope it hope it lives very long. Yeah, I mean you talk about how strong the uh, the, the the French league is. I mean you just look at uh, Courtney Laws who uh, won the premiership uh, captain of Northampton Saints last season and he goes and uh, he goes to the second tier of uh, French rugby, he goes to breathe, you know, so that just shows how strong their second tier is, uh, let, let alone their top tier. And the, the other point I thought you made was um, the, uh, the compare. You, you, you say, well, football is different to rugby. And that's, that's a point that I think a lot of the people who organize the sport rugby in particular don't guess, uh, especially in England. Uh, they, they seem to think that I, I know that these, that the, the football models, have made a lot of money like champions league and the premier league but that doesn't mean that that if rugby follows those same models it's going to be exactly the same they even call it the premiership and they rebranded it champions league we call it the champions cup it's like it's 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 not going to it's not necessarily going to work just because you do it the same way football does the urc on a different hand on the in the different thing does can't follow the football model they they they, they, they like promotion relegation isn't necessarily going to work here you're, you're putting five unions together it's a different thing within itself um if you have to compare it to anything it might be closer to like an nfl kind of situation it's, it's a it's a league uh, within itself and it's had to work with what it is and um we've gotten to a stage where we we're, we're still in the unknown there's still tweaks that need to be made but uh, overall the product on the pitch is 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 what's most important and there's been some exciting um run-ins there's been exciting playoff matches and uh, and exciting things all around and th- the final thing is is that i always wonder if leinster had won those first three titles would there be a different conversation about the popularity of the league so that so from us to the rest of the urc you're welcome hopefully we'll we'll do something different about that this season you know listen we're gonna leave it there uh many thanks again to tom and kieran for joining us it was a great chat and i uh, hope to have you both on again soon thanks lads thanks jeff thanks jeff just